I said, we have Jesus. That is so vitally important that you understand that we have Jesus. And just like I have these glasses on my eyes, when you're reading back into the Old Testament, you put you have to put the glasses or the hermeneutic filter of Jesus on your eyes when you read. Luke chapter 4, verse 18, um, verse 17. And that was delivered unto him the book of the prophets, Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He have sent me, now this is Jesus, he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That's the power of God unto salvation. So why would he put poverty on somebody to grow when he's been sent to preach the gospel, the power of God unto salvation to the poor? He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So why would he put sickness on the person when he's been sent to heal? <laughs> to preach deliverance to the captive. So if he came to set people free, then why would he use a person being captive to try to grow them when he's been sent to preach deliverance to the captive? The recovering of the sight to the blind. That's over. Ooh, I want to deal with that. So if he came, if he was sent to, re, to bring recovery of the sight to the blind, why would he make a person blind? Why would he keep something from you to try to grow you? Don't make sense. To set at liberty them that are bruised. So if he came to set at liberty them that are already bruised, why would he come bruising? He doesn't need to come and do something that he's been sent to undo. Watch this. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And if you study that out, the acceptable year of the Lord, just that verse 19, that goes back to Leviticus. That is Jubilee. So now you got to remember now in Jubilee, all debts were canceled. Even a sickness obeyed Jubilee. Sick, sick people got healed. Anything that was lost was recovered. Now, I want to thank you. About, think about that. Jesus came to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So Jubilee now is not a season. Jubilee is a person that not only you dwell in, but he also, Jubilee dwells on the inside of you. Well, it would be crazy for him to put dead on me when Jubilee is in me. Matter of fact, that would be too contrasting. Remember, God is always on the side of his word. Now watch this. And he closed the book. Now stay right there. That's Luke chapter four, verse 28. Let's go and go back to uh, Isaiah and see what Jesus read. And let's see why he closed the book right there. Let's see why he closed the book. Remember, I don't believe that Jesus is allowing or permitting bad things to happen to you because he's trying to grow you. He's trying to get the best out of you. We're not talking about problems showing up. And all of that is the result of sin anyway. Man would have always, had man not sinned, he would have still had to reason, make decisions, problem decisions. He still would have had to do all that. We, we got sin in place now. I don't believe that he allows or permits sin or Satan to do stuff to you so he can grow you and get the best out of you. I just don't believe it. Now, if you do, fine. But now let's see. Isaiah chapter 61, let's look at verse 1. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Mm. Oh, wow. Sound like, sound like Jesus repeating. Because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, open the prison to them, opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Okay, okay. Now, Jesus closed the book right there. Let's see why he closed the book. Because the next part of this verse says, and the day of vengeance of our God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jesus, he didn't repeat that. When Jesus got to that part of Isaiah, he closed the book. You know why? Because he would take God's vengeance and wrath upon him. So if Jesus would take God's wrath and vengeance upon him in place of it belonging to us, why would God then now turn around and use vengeance on us to try to grow us? Why would God allow or permit anything under the category of vengeance to happen to us? That means that he will be saying, forget what Jesus did, forget about the cross, and I'm going to do it anyway. And even in natural law, you can't try a man twice for the same crime. God himself would be crucifying Jesus afresh. 